tonight is, I don't know what percentage, but 80 or 90 percent of victory is an attitude that you have. Mm -hmm. So let me just share this from uh, Matthew. This is where John the Baptist had some doubt about whether Jesus was truly the Christ or not. And I've got an entire teaching on this. I'm going to intentionally skip over it because it's a lengthy teaching. And if I start trying to explain it, I'll spend time on it. <laughs> but after John's disciples had left, then Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 11 and in verse 12. He says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. And you know, for a long time, I struggled with this. Like, what does this mean, that the violent take it by force? Mm -hmm. And what the Lord has shown me through this is it's an attitude that you've got to get this attitude that Jesus purchased these things for, my, for me. This is mine, and I will not settle for less. You've got to get this attitude of violence. You know, it says over in uh, Revelation, chapter 3, this is where he was talking to one of the seven churches, and he said in verse 15, he says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou work cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. And you know, I really believe that I don't know exactly how it happened, but the church as a whole has become very complacent and very lethargic and passive. And there's even a lot of Christians preaching that we are supposed to be totally passive. I mean, this is where you get like the Quakers that came out with being a conscientious objector and they wouldn't go to war, they wouldn't fight for anything. Uh, there, there are a large segment of the body of Christ that actually believe that passivity is the way that we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And um, again, I could make a lengthy thing out of this. I'm just going to say some of these things very quickly and you go check it out. But in the second chapter of the book of John, Jesus, ma Jesus made a whip out of some cords and beat people and overturned the money changers table. And then he did it at the end of his ministry, the week before his crucifixion, Mark chapter 11. So he didn't do this just once. He did it twice. And, of course, we know that Jesus never had a flesh flash. He never sinned, so it, it wasn't wrong, but it shows you it was deliberate. It takes a while to make a whip out of just some cords. He thought about this, and then he quoted Scripture to say that the zeal of thine health has eaten me up. I believe he, he saw this as a fulfillment of prophecy. And anyway, the point I'm getting at, he, he uh, exhibited anger. This is the same one who said, turn the other cheek. This is the same one that said, if they sue you at the law, take your coat, give them your cloak also. There is a place for resisting evil. Now, we don't fight against flesh and blood. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, 12 talks about that the weapons of our warfare aren't carnal. Excuse me, that's, that's a great one too. That's 2 <laughs> Corinthians chapter 10. But in uh, Ephesians chapter 6, we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so we're fighting a spiritual battle. And you know, without me getting totally off the subject, uh, this applies to where we are today. The stuff that we see in our society where there's uh, riots going on and protests and looting and burning and killing and the things going on, it's not just natural. People are trying to attribute it to race problems, uh, to inequities and in income and uh, all of these kind of things. It's demonic. We aren't fighting flesh and blood. Yeah. This is a spiritual battle. And so you don't get mad at the people, mm -hmm. but you should resist the devil. James chapter 4, verse 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And the word resist means to actively fight against. Did you know if you're saying, Oh God, please change our nation. Oh God, please heal me. Oh God, please prosper me. Those things are expressing your desire and a request, but you aren't violently resolved. You know, Smith Wigglesworth gave an example on this very passage of scripture about James 4, 7 about resisting the devil and he 
I think he died in uh, somewhere around 1940 something or 1950 something. But anyway, he was waiting for a bus in England. He was English, and there was a little old lady there with her little poodle. And she kept telling this poodle, she says, now go home, honey. And she'd talk sweet to this dog, and this dog would just wag its tail and stand there. And she kept saying, now go home, go home. And this dog was just wagging its tail. So here comes the bus around the corner. And she says, now here comes the bus. Go home, go home. And the dog just stood there. Finally, the bus pulled right up in front of him. And she goes, get home like that, just as loud as she could. And that dog just, boom, was gone. <laughs> and Smith turns around and says, that is resisting the devil. <laughs> and see, just to say, dear devil, please don't do that's this. Good. Our God, please get the devil off my back. Uh-huh. That's not what this is talking about. Jesus said that in the kingdom of heaven, we are in a war. We are fighting a battle. And it's amazing how many people don't know that. They think that everything is just natural. You know, this uh, Bedlin and and Ed May that you were talking about, these two uh, black ladies that were on our uh, Truth and Liberty broadcast a few weeks ago and will be speaking at the Women Arise Conference. Uh, Ed May, I believe it was, was the one that got hooked up with Louis Farrakhan and she hated white people. And I mean hated them, could not tolerate a white person. But then she talked about when she got born again, that she was totally delivered and now they are standing up. They're the ones that, you know, uh, I think it was, it wasn't, Cuomo is the governor of New York, right? Uh, Yeah. De Blasio, I believe, is the mayor. And he painted uh, Black Lives Matter in front of Trump Tower, right there on, uh, you know, in downtown New York. And so they were the ones who walked across there with some paint underneath their coats or something like this. And they just dumped this paint on top of the Black Lives Matter thing. And then they got down on their hands and knees and just started smearing it and painted over it. And they got arrested. And I mean, these ladies are radical. And anyway, they were making this exact point. They were saying it was demonic, the hatred that they had in their heart. And it doesn't matter if it's white on black or, or black on white. It's demonic is what we're fighting. It is a spiritual battle. Yeah. And most people, you know, I'm not against doctors. I'm not against bankers. I'm not against lawyers. I'm not against any of these natural things that we do. But what I am against is people thinking that the answer to your sickness is only physical, mm-hmm. natural. The answer to your financial problem is just you need more credit, you need a, a better loan, or you need somebody to give you money. Or the answer to any of these things is just natural things. God uses some natural things, but you need to recognize that we are in a battle. Did you realize that probably half or more of the healings that Jesus produced that are recorded in the New Testament. He cast demons out of people. Scoliosis was this woman that was bent over and couldn't lift herself up. Person that had seizures, those were demons that Jesus cast out of a person. Uh, Blindness, deafness were demons. Dumbness, inability to talk Uh. were demons. Now, I'm not saying that every person that has those things is demonic. A person, you know, could have an accident or something and have their back hurt just through some physical, natural things. But the point I am saying is we are fighting a spiritual battle, and most people don't know it. And they are just looking for natural ways to overcome things. You need to recognize it's the devil that's trying to steal your health, trying to steal your money, trying to destroy your marriage, trying to destroy your vision about what God has called you to do. You know, there are times that I've had things happen to me that just, it was too weird for it to be totally natural. Yeah. I mean, in one day's time, you have a flat tire, you run out of gas, you have four or five things, boom, just happen. And even though any one of them could have been a coincidence, the fact that all of them happen at once, I mean, Satan can orchestrate things like this. And you need to recognize that Satan is trying to steal your vision and take your joy away. And you have to get this attitude where the kingdom of heaven is under attack. Satan is coming against you, and he's got more than enough people who will cooperate with him to come against you. And you've got to get this attitude that I will not allow the devil to steal what Jesus has already given me. You know, like, just take the example of joy. 
you know, praise God. One of the things that I'm really excited about is that this election cycle is going to be over tonight. <laughs> I'm believing for a certain person to win, and I'm believing for landslides and stuff, but I'm just glad it's over. I mean, to hear all of these sides criticizing each other and contradicting each other, and it just depends on which one you want to listen to. They, they totally say the other one's lying and stuff. I'm just tired of this stuff. And if you aren't careful, hearing all of this stuff can steal your joy from you. But you've got to make a decision. Like David did in Psalms chapter 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. Notice the terminology, I will do it. See, that's getting violently resolved. If you only praise God when you feel like praising God, mm -hmm. then you aren't going to praise God very often. That's true. You know, one of the things, we were just watching a video just a few moments ago, and whether you like Trump or not, I'm not, this isn't an endorsement for Trump, but it was this video where he was dancing to YMCA and he was doing this stuff. And one thing I admire about President Trump is that that guy has been attacked like no person I've ever seen in my life, and here he is still happy. Still dancing. <laughs> I, that just amazes me. And I can guarantee you it's not because everything's gone his way. I think he's been attacked probably more than any president that I'm aware of in my lifetime. And he's, he's made a decision. I'm not sure that his decision is based on the Word of God, but we as believers, we've got every reason in the book. I mean, if worse comes to worse, you are going to die and go to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. I just was talking to one of my employees a few moments ago that their grandpa, that she's been praying for him, and he's gotten better and better and better, but now it looks like he's about to die. And she was asking me about it, and she says, as I was praying, I feel like he wants to die. He's ready to go. And I, anyway, I was ministering to her, and part of what I was telling her was about that, man, it's not bad to die and go be with the Lord. Matter of fact, let me just share this story with you that Jesse Duplantis just spoke yesterday at our school, uh -huh. and I was visiting with him. And uh, anyway, he gave a story about his older brother, who was a couple of years older than him. He had something wrong, and Jesse went over to pray with him, and the older brother says, Look, I know I can be healed, but I'm through. My time, it's time for me to go. And so he just decided he wanted to go. So Jesse just visited with him for a couple hours. They had a great time. And as he was leaving, he says, Well, you tell everybody up there hi from Jesse. And so that was the last words he spoke to his brother. And then that was on a Saturday. On Monday, his brother died. And I think it was the next day. He was on a treadmill exercising. And it was like 7 in the morning. And he heard this huge commotion outside. And he thought maybe it was the people that came to work on his yard. And he was wondering, what are they doing here this early in the morning? And it just kept getting louder. So finally, he got off the treadmill and walked outside. And there was nobody there. And he went out and started looking around, and all of a sudden he heard his brother say, and Jesse says to say hi to everybody. And then he heard his father and mother and aunts and uncles and grandparents all talking and saying, oh, Jesse, and, and the Lord just let him hear what was going yeah, on in awesome. heaven. I tell you well, what, when we get to heaven, we're going to be shocked that we fought so hard to stay here <laughs> and ate beans and <laughs> plants and seeds and stuff and you could have been having some good stuff you'd have gotten there earlier anyway my point is see you've got to get to a place to where you just refuse to give up if yeah. nothing else you're going to go to heaven you've got every reason to rejoice and you know I'm believing for a certain outcome on this uh, election but I can guarantee you I will be rejoicing tomorrow I don't care who wins my joy is not in who's present now, I might, I might be doing some serious praying if it works out differently than what I was looking for, but I am still going to rejoice. My joy is in the Lord, and it is something I have determined. I, I've had terrible things happen to me, as I know Carrie has. Every one of you have had terrible things happen. And yet, you know, I, I have chosen to rejoice. There's been times when I felt like falling apart, and I go out and intentionally just go to praising God. Yeah, yeah. This is the attitude that he's talking about, being violently resolved. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to a goal that God has set before you, a lot of people will move in that direction, but if they experience resistance,
for a little while, but if it becomes too hard, they just settle in and say, well, you know, I guess it's not going to work. That's not having a violent attitude. The people who see God's will come to pass in their life are the people that just literally get to a place as Jesus purchased this for me and there aren't enough demons in hell to take from me what God has given me. Another way of saying it, like I started this uh, Bible study, is if you, if you settle for less, if you can settle for less, you will. If you can live with it, you will. Mm-hmm. But when you get to a place where I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired and I refuse to live this way, that is a great attitude. That's the attitude he's talking about. This is resisting the devil. Over in, he, uh, where is this, Jane, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, it says, Be angry and sin not. Okay. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. And then verse 27 says, Neither give place to the devil. And people have interpreted that as that saying, God knows we're human. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to get mad. So he'll allow you to be mad as long as the sun is up. But when the sun sets, you just make sure you confess it and get everything settled before you go to bed at night. You know, that's not what this is talking about. This isn't saying that anger is okay during daylight hours, but not when the sun is down. This is talking about be angry and sin not. There is a righteous anger such as the anger that Jesus used when he drove the money changers out of the temple, such as the anger that Jesus expressed on a number of occasions when he talked to the scribes and Pharisees and called them, you hypocrites, you vipers, you're like whited sepulchers, look good on the outside, but you're full of dead man's bones. But you know, that's the same one that says, you know, don't speak, don't speak evil of your neighbor, that turn the other cheek, let him take your coat also. Again, there is a place to uh, not defend yourself. And vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. Romans chapter 12. There's a place for that. But there is a place for us standing up against the devil. We aren't fighting people, but we are fighting evil. And you have to resist the devil. And so that's what it's talking about. Be angry, a godly type of anger without being sinned. And then it says, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. What that's talking about is don't ever let yourself get complacent. Don't ever settle into being passive. Uh Don't ever become just lethargic. You have to keep yourself stirred up. You have to hate evil. It says, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 9. Let your love be without dissimulation. The word dissimulation, we would use the word hypocrite. Don't be hypocritical. Be Abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. You've got to hate evil. Yeah. And yet Christians have gotten to where they tolerate homosexuality. Again, we aren't fighting the people, but we are fighting this evil. Homosexuality is evil. They've gotten to where they're complacent towards transgenderism. They're complacent towards adultery. They're complacent towards socialism, which... A lot of people think, well, no, that's not biblical. There's nothing in the Bible against that. There's a lot in the Bible against socialism. I'm not going to take time to teach on it. But they've embraced these things. And again, I say that as long as you can tolerate something, you will. You need to stir yourself up, get angry, and not let that hatred for evil diminish. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is one thing. Again, I'm not saying this to pat myself on the back, but I'm saying this to hopefully instill some things in you and help you. Uh, Daniel Amstutz traveled with me for a while, and we did some meetings together. And Daniel's the one that runs my uh, Thursday healing school, and he's seen thousands and thousands of people here. You said he uh, hosts some of these. Yeah, he hosts and he teaches. Many of you have seen him teach here on the Bible study. 
he's an awesome guy. Yeah. But anyway, he traveled with me, and one of the uh, observations that he made, he told me this later, he says, you know, I preach on healing a lot, but he deals with some sickness, and he's had some things happen to him, been in the hospital, wrote a song about it, mm -hmm. about being in the MRI machine. But anyway, he, he was asking the question about how come Andrew hadn't been sick in 50-something years, and yet he fights something, you know, every few years or something. And the thing that he learned traveling with me, he says, I found out you hate sickness more than I do. Mm -hmm. And that is absolutely true. I hate sickness. I mean, I hate it. If I ever begin to get the, I, I think I might have had one or two headaches in my life. So I'm not sure what a headache is, to tell you the truth. But if I ever get anything that even remotely relates to a headache, man, I guarantee you, I'll put down whatever I'm doing. I'll go to praying in tongues. I'll turn every spiritual weapon I've got on the devil. I will not have a headache. Yeah. I don't have a stuffy nose. I don't have a cold. I fight, you know, it's like, here's healing. And the devil's starting something over here. I fight the battle way over here. It's like I don't wait for him to get into my body. The moment I see any symptom, I'll fight that thing as if it was adultery. Mm -hmm. I won't get sick any more than I'll commit adultery. Amen. And I know that some of you are just thinking, this is ridiculous. You can't think that way. That's the reason you get sick and the reason I don't. I'm not saying that to condemn anybody. Carrie and Mike just dealt with sickness. There's nothing wrong. I'm not saying you're evil or anything, but I am saying that over 50-something years, I have fought and fought and fought, and I hate sickness so much that you just cannot make me sick. I will not get sick. I don't believe in being sick. And some people think, well, oh, I've never heard such a thing. Obviously. <laughs> That's the reason you get sick. Again, I'm not saying that it means that you aren't loving the Lord. It doesn't mean that you don't have faith. Uh, you could have something happen and you apply your faith and get over it, and that's great. But you could either fight here or you can just get over here to where I'm not even going to have it come nigh my dwelling. You can get to a place that instead of waiting until you're in a financial bind, the moment you even have a thought of poverty or see the slightest sign, boy, you start believing right then and you just don't deal with poverty. Uh, you don't allow uh, anger, you know, towards people, hurt. You don't, you don't fester on it for the weekend and then on Monday say, well, I'm going to forgive. You just make a decision that nobody's going to rent space in my mind. That's good. You are not going to sit here and dominate my thinking and let me sit here and muse over all of the things that you said about me. And you can get to a place to where you literally will not tolerate things. And that's not everything that there is to success in the Christian life, but that is a big part of it is just getting a violent attitude. If you pursue it, you'll get it. If you don't, you won't. Yeah. That is really powerful. And I tell you, that attitude is hard to maintain in a world that just settles for mediocrity. And again, I'm not against any person watching this, but I can guarantee you the vast majority of Christians, you know, we have tens of thousands of people that watch these uh, Bible studies, I would say that the majority of you accept that sickness is just part of life. There's many of you that accept allergies, food allergies, uh, hay fever, things like that. There's many of you that as you get older, you just accept that your body's going to wear out, that you're going to have problems. You know, I had something happen a few years back where I was opening a, a jar and the lid was on real tight. And I mean, I had to really squeeze to open that thing. And when I did, I mean, pain shot through my hand. And again, I don't know what arthritis is, but th that was the first thought I had. That, man, you're getting older and arthritis. And you know what I did? I bet you I put that lid on and off a hundred times just saying, in the name of Jesus, I refuse to have arthritis. Amen. And I fought the thing. And because of it, I have no problems. Okay. Every once in a while, I have a little pain or something. And the moment I have a pain, boy, I turn on the thing like it's the plague. Yeah, that's good. It's an attitude. Good. And because of it, I walk in healing. Mm -hmm. And it, it applies not only to healing, it applies to finances, it applies yeah. to not mm -hmm. being hurt and offended, and on and on you go. You've got to take the kingdom of heaven by force. Amen. And every one of us can do it. That's good. 
Okay. Amen. Well, we have some good questions here as well. So I'll jump right into this. Malcolm on Facebook asks this. How can we tell if we are fighting against the demonic force or if it's just something in the natural? Are there signs? Well, that's what the Holy Spirit is for. Mm -hmm. You simply ask, God, is this natural or is it demonic? And I mean, sometimes the Lord will just speak very clearly to you that this is demonic. And uh, other times it's natural. You know, there was, uh, I've been walking, like yesterday I walked nine and a half miles. And not this year, but a year ago or so, when I would walk, I would have a pain right in the center of my back, and it would become really painful. And, of course, I just kept walking mm -hmm. and fighting it. And I was rebuking it, thinking this was the devil. And did you know, it just dawned on me. This is so simple. you got to be ignorant. <laughs> of it. But I realized that when I was walking, I was keeping my head forward and looking down a lot. Mm. And you know what? Your head weighs somewhere around 10 pounds. And you walk with your head bent over, and you know what? The middle of your back hurts. Yeah. <laughs> and so I intentionally started keeping my head up. And you know what? I was thinking about that today when I was out walking. I said, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't have any back pain. <laughs> so awesome. that was something natural. And sometimes you need to know, is this natural or is it demonic? And the only thing I know to do is ask the Lord and let the peace of God rule in your heart. If you're in doubt about it, rebuke it. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's good. So here's another one. Brianna on YouTube asks this. She says, is there a way to be violent towards the enemy without being scary? For instance, casting demons out of a young child or speaking against their symptoms without scaring the child. Yeah. Sometimes, some people think that to get a demon out of something, you got to scream and yell. And sometimes, did you know that all that's doing is releasing your fear? Like I remember casting a demon out of a person in service and I mean all of it. I mean, this person manifested. And uh, I had my eyes closed. But they told me later that this guy was trying to hit me and grab me and he couldn't touch me. And I didn't even know that. I had my eyes closed. But, uh, man, all around me, all of a sudden you could hear people, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. They were just screaming, Jesus. And, and this one lady went, I found the chart in heaven. Holly be thy name. <laughs> she was saying it just as fast as she could. And there's some people that think that you have to get... Mm -hmm. You know, screaming or yelling or something. Sometimes just a, a quiet rebuke is all you need. It's it's the attitude of your heart. I'm not necessarily talking about getting weird. Yeah. Matter of fact, one of the greatest examples I heard was about Smith Wigglesworth, who saw great healings and saw demons cast out. And one time he was going to bed and he had candlelight back in those days. And as he was going to bed, he saw something move at the cor at the floor of his bed. So he held the candle up and there was a demon there. And he goes, oh, it's only you and blew out the candle and went to bed. <laughs> now, that's a person yeah. that knows that they have authority and that Satan can't bother. Him. Awesome. Another time Satan moves something and he saw it and he said, you move that right back where it was. And he made him put it back. <laughs> So you don't have to become loud or boisterous, but you do have to believe in your heart. And in your heart, you have to be 100% convinced. Yeah. And you know and you know when you're saying something just out of head knowledge and when you know that you know in your heart. And there is nothing that can stand against what you're saying at that moment. And really, it's, you know, the scripture says with your heart, you believe and with the mouth, confession is made. You can be saying the right things, doing the right thing, but if your heart is saying it out of fear, you've yeah. actually empowered the devil. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need to keep your mouth shut until you get to a place that you can speak in faith. That's good. So um, <clears throat> one of the questions here is by Groovy Gary on chat. Asks this, he says, why do we have to take by force what the Father wants to give us? Because it's just like, here's Carrie, and I say, Carrie, I want to give you this. And so she starts to receive it. But we got an enemy here that's going to steal it if he can. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And the Lord doesn't force it on you. And he doesn't rebuke the devil for you. It said you resist the devil. So it would be like, here, here it is. Carrie has to reach out and take it and fight against the devil. And sometimes it's not necessarily a strict demon. It's just the thoughts of the devil. It's thoughts of unbelief like... You've been raised to believe that, well, it, it, you get sick every flu season. It's just the way that yep. it is. Yep. That's not necessarily a demonic thing, but it originated with the devil. You're warring against your mind, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're going to have to fight to overcome that. And you have to fight to overcome what 
uh, you know, society is saying. Right now, we're dealing with legal stuff and court cases, and we got people in this town saying terrible things about us. And uh, you know what? I, I have to sit there and intentionally say, I will not listen to this. Yeah. 